they're doing it because they feel that lack of coaching, lack of support, a lack of knowledge, and these information products, these coaching products, they hit them right where they, they right, right in the field. It hits them right in their need, right in their desire to have more production, right? But it's not just, you can't just promise them transactions. <laughs> Agents, thanks for uh, jumping in. Our guest today, someone you guys may know, he's been around for a while. I've, I've had the uh, pleasure of interviewing him uh, before. Gustavo Munoz Castro, CEO of Power ISA. And we've got an exciting topic for those that are looking to grow um, through agent recruitment. And um, it's a hot topic, my friend. So, prospecting for agent oh, yeah. recruitment. Um, man, where, where do I start with this? So, so I'll share with you, uh, the Jason Martin group is a, is a growing team. We've got 15 members, uh, 17 producing agents rather. And I, I have to share a tiny secret. I hope, well, I hope people in my market are listening, but, uh, we'll see. <laughs> the, uh, I, um, I had a limiting belief, uh, Gus, that, um, I needed to be the person to call and set up the initial meeting. And then I had an aha moment of um, we actually outsourced that initial calling, right? The prospecting and uh, it was fascinating. And what I realized is quite frankly, the prospecting services are much better at this than me. And, and so all of, a sudden, I, all of a sudden my calendar started to fill up with appointments and I went, oh wow, I don't think I'll ever set another appointment um, on my own before. So, so that was me. Is that your experience with everybody who utilizes the service? Yeah. Well, that, that's the one I want to see. That's the one I love, uh, you know, and because absolutely, I think and this goes not just for agent recruitment, by the way, right? Because I think there's several parts of the lead generation, lead recruiting, lead conversion process that it's easy for an agent to feel, oh, no one can do this as good, right? I, I, and that, and that's, not, that's one of them. The, the agent recruitment initial call is one of them. But you can also see an initial call to these Facebook leads, to these super expensive new leads. And there's always a reason you can think, no, no, no one can do this as good as me. Um, you know, and, and, and I think as we want to scale our businesses, as we want to grow, right? As we want to get some of our time back, right? Like don't want to be working 16 hours a day. I, I think we start making those choices and taking those risks. It's a risk, Jason, right? Getting someone in there to make a call for you. I don't care what is the purpose is, right? There's a risk associated with that. And I think some folks just never take that, make, take that step because it's too risky for them. Uh, not making that choice is also a risk, right? You're, 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 you're gonna get burnt out. You're not, you're gonna get diminishing results you're, and you're gonna be, you're gonna stay where you are. You're not gonna move forward, right? So I, pull, I have a lot of empathy for folks um, that struggle with that step of having someone come in and make those calls for you. But you know, the, the, what I love to hear is that, hey, people can take that risk and you can win big, right? Yes, something yeah. can go wrong, but holy cow, the potential to win is so large that for me, again, this is you know, from a business owner to another, no, no risk, no reward. And you can also take steps to mitigate that risk, 100%, 100%. So, but you know, Jason, from that story, now you make me curious. Now I'm gonna interview you. I'm gonna have a few questions for you. Go so for it. When you, when, when, you, when you decide to have someone come in and help you with those calls, um, what, what did you have them call, for example? Was this, you know, a uh, uh, local agent that you knew personally? Was this like calling the MLS? What did you have them do? Can you go give us a little bit of detail on what, what you had them do and how that worked for you? It, so in, in, in full disclosure, I believe that it is a numbers game, right? So oh, yeah. we, I need a lot of appointments. To find the right people for our organization, and um, so we we had them call through the MLS. It was a certain criteria that that I Perfect. sent over, Perfect. and um, they called through the MLS. And I felt like we didn't have a bunch to lose. My hesitation was, well, they're not going to be able to do it as good as me. And the person on the other end of the phone, actually, I'm more likely to set the appointment because I'm calling on my own organization's behalf. And what I learned, and, and, and I'm telling you, it's been a game changer for us, is that the appointment actually gets set at a higher rate 
because they're calling. And I think it's because of this. Well, one is the content and the person calling. It matters a of ton, course. right? You of have course. to have a professional. You know that as well. Um, I think it was the realization that, oh, wait, it, it gave me a little more substance when people called on my behalf. Like, oh, that's pretty cool. Jason's got oh, some okay. from his that organization. Some status in there, right? Some, some status, uh, right? And I didn't want, to, a didn't want to say status, but I guess that's the right word. And um, it gave it a little more pop. And I was like, oh, it kind of hurt my pride a little bit. Well, I thought I was calling you directly. And like, <laughs> that was it. But it, here's what it really did. It gave me back a ton of time. Um, one of the struggles in, in, in my business and, and in my world, one of my personal struggles is consistency, right? That's gone with this because my calendar is now filled. Now I'm on calls with people that want to talk to me. And I got all that time back. I gained, I, I leveled up in consistency and it was all through leverage. So I'm a huge fan. I, I, I'll, I'll selfishly share. I actually hope not everybody does it because I hope my market doesn't get oversaturated with people taking my strategy. Uh, but I know from your business standpoint, Gus, yeah, yeah, that's what we're here for. And uh, you know, 100%. Know, that's a light on it. But, <laughs> but I can tell you guys, if you're in different markets and you're trying to grow your team or any other aspect of your business, I, I can speak uh, more clearly to team growth, agent recruitment, because that's the mode I'm in. But um, for that, it's, it's been a real game changer. And uh, I, love it. I promise you, I'm not fabricating that. That is that is something that we have a ton of confidence going into to next year with. And we've mapped out our recruitment goals. And I, I don't want to mislead folks. We have a tremendous value proposition. And th this call is not. Yeah, that. so I love yeah. it. I love it. Actually, yeah. So I want to get into this. There's a lot of great things you said there, Jason. Actually, it's really aligned with what I want to talk about today. So I love that yep. story. Thank you. The check's in the mail, my friend. The check's All right, in the mail. good, man. <laughs> Because you mentioned something that's really important about this process, right? Because I think a lot of times people are concerned that whoever they hand this off to, whether it's on their team, whether it's an outsourced company, it doesn't matter, that they're not going to be as good at it, right? They're going to be as good at it. How can you talk other than the owner? It's my baby. This is my company. How, that's right. Getting a call from them. But you mentioned a word that's super key, and that is consistency. Consistency. Yeah. And I've been doing the ISA game for years now. And people are always shocked to understand that someone that can do this, that call at 80% of your, of your level and your passion, 80%, but they do it eight hours a day, five days a week, it's not going to be close what the results are going to be. It's not going to be close, right? It's not, yep. this is not a real comparison. This is not a, oh, they're going to be slightly better than you. No, they're going to be about 10 times better than you because 80% of Jason working eight hours a day doing this is going to outperform you by a lot, not a small amount. So I think that's a really important thing. People can sometimes underestimate the consistency factor it is. And plus you have your, 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 your caller doing true prospecting, like through off of the MLS. Yeah, there was a filtered list, which is good. And, sure. I'll, and I'll talk more about the list. Um, but, but that's 100% of the numbers game. It is talk to as many people as possible and deliver that pitch to as many people as possible because most of them are going to say no, right? That's a big, a big part of it. And that is not a good use of your time actually, Jake, doing the true cold call, you know, cold open uh, for people on the MLS. It's not, not the best use of your time. You probably wouldn't even do that. I right? probably wouldn't even get to that level. Um, but having a, a structure in place uh, to have someone do that to the true prospecting to where you talk to enough people to deliver that value proposition, right? To, yeah. to actually deliver it, right? So that's where I want to start today. The first thing people need to think about, whether you're recruiting for a team, whether you're recruiting for a brokerage, the example I have a more in the brokerage space, but, but even teams as well, it applies the same thing. Um, yeah. The number one thing you have to have honed in, understood, and battle tested is that offer. It's the offer. It's, and I, it's the value proposition, I have like to call it the offer. Right, because you have to call to, you have to call them. You have no idea who's calling. You have no idea why you're calling. You've got to have a really good intro to that script um, to really get some of their attention, right? To get their attention, to get them to even not hang up on you. Hanging up is the easiest thing you can do. It's really about value, value proposition, right? And, I, and I'm going to give you a couple of examples of very successful recruiting campaigns that we run. Um, you know, one of them in California. This was for, you know, and, and, and a little bit of a, of, a, of a cheat there, but this is a 100% a, a commission brokerage, right? So that was 
Say what you will about the 100% commission brokerages. Uh, I'm not in favor or against. This is just a true example. Um, that's a very compelling offer. That's a very compelling offer. Calling someone, oh, you know, keep 100% of your commission. There was more to it than that, right? You know, because this this, uh, uh, this this team had us calling the MLS as well. It was a true cold call prospecting game. And that offer would generate opportunities like crazy. Like if we could get two, three, four, five appointments per day running that offer because it, it gets people's attention. It gets people's attention. And they want to talk. Whether that agent is qualified or not or a good cultural fit, that was, that was for the discussion. But it would generate a lot of interest, right? But it is not the only one. This is a funny thing. That brokerage had a 100% offer, uh, but most of the people that signed would sign on a 50-50 split. <laughs> Does that sound amazing? But, 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 there was, but because once they actually had in a conversation with the broker owner, they'd say, hey, I've got my 100% offer. That's great. But my top producers making six figures a year are on this other plan. Let me tell you about that one. And, and, but again, this is the start of the conversation. The idea is to start the conversation, right? So that was successful for them. They wanted as many opportunities as they could get because they knew that, yes, the 100% offer was very compelling to get people through the door. But to get the best results, oh, you should check out my other plan. And this is what that includes. And it includes leads and support, more things. Like it's more, it was a brokerage, but it had like a team program, like a team program as well within the brokerage. And it's, it's an example there where, yes, you know, the 100% thing is enticing. But once you're talking to someone, you understand their needs and their, and their, you know, their goals. Oh, you know what? Your needs and goals might align better with this additional offer that I have here as well. As, I thought it was a brilliant strategy. Um, and, and, and I think that that brokerage, that team went from like 10 people to 100 people in a matter of months, right? And with, with, with that kind of a process, I, I wasn't surprised that that was a result, right? So really, really interesting, really amazing. As everyone on this call knows, some of the folks that are doing the most creative, the most, um, I want to say aggressive uh, uh, work in the recruitment space are the national brokerages that really favor recruiting. I'm talking about the Keller Williams of the right? And my experience, and I work with all of them, by the way, I'm not, I'm not pushing one or the other. I'm here to talk about results, folks. The people that are always pushing the envelope, trying new and different things are these, are these companies because they have a, 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 a revenue share, uh, a something share process in, that, in, those, in those companies, right? And that tends to foster a lot of recruitment. So 90% of what the work that we do on recruiting is either with Keller Williams or with the XP. That's just kind of the way things work out, right? The example I gave is not from one of those companies, but there's a lot of examples where they do. The thing that these companies have done is they have gotten unbelievably creative with their offers very creative. I'm like, how do these people think about this? Okay, well, that's interesting. Um, and I think their, their, their revenue share model has something to do with that. One of the things that they offer when they want to get people to join their brokerage, join their team, or in the case of these EXP teams, their organization, they call it organizations now, like, team, like massive teams that they want to get people in, is that they've gotten really creative with their lead magnets. They've got really tangible product, services, value adds, that they want to put in front of people, right? And I think that lesson is applicable to anyone, right? They're the ones that are doing the most work in that space, but they're not talking about commission splits. They're not talking about, you know, we are an education-based brokerage. Everyone has that. Everyone has some kind of education. They're not talking about leads. They're not talking about, oh, we're going to give you a job. Don't even say that, right? But they've got some really, really interesting offers because they know what people struggle with. One of the big offers that they have is, additional products for education. For example, we have one team that we're working with in the XP that had a, a, a course on how to generate leads through Facebook. One of the members of this team had a course, very, very famous course. They had people coming into it. I think they were charging, I think, three or $4,000 for that course. If you join their team on the XP, you get that course for free, right? So that is another, a really compelling offer, right? A really very tangible digital asset a class, a course, uh, something that in the marketplace is valued at $3,000. Well, you get that, right? For one of the benefits of joining my team and you get an hour of coaching with the author of that course uh, every week, right? So that is one example. But I think, I think if, you're a have, if you run a team or if you run a brokerage, I would challenge you to create a digital asset like that because you can. 
That's why you have a team. That's why you have a brokerage, right? Product time. You're already providing this education, this education for the, for, the, for the agents. I would challenge you to productize that. It is not just Jason Martin holding your hand and coaching with you. It is Jason Martin's uh, uh, course to get, you know, your first 10 listings in 90 days, right? I would challenge people on this call to productize that knowledge. It's not just you get access to Jason. No, 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 no. You get access to Jason's number one uh, brain trust product, which is how to get your first, how to get paid within the first 90 days in real estate, right? The things that Jason does to get everyone on his team performing and getting paid within the first 90 days and doing 10, 20 transactions within the first 12 months. If you do everything in this course, you're going to win, right? And you get access to that. How much is that worth? I know you're thinking it's ten thousand dollars, but you get it absolutely free if you join our team. That's what I mean. And the teams that are doing unbelievable with this are taking that approach. They're productizing the coaching, the the, the courses, the education, and they're including that as part of their offer. I think it's a brilliant thing. I think it's amazing. And we have one uh, uh, or one one EXP one organization we're working with that they productize it. They have the digital product and they throw in one hour of coaching a week. So they have got, and they started with this offer in December, uh, and we're almost a year in. 3,000 people have attended that, that, that initial coaching call. 3,000 3, people have attended, because again, if you're giving away coach, hey, come in and take the coaching. Not everyone has joined, but I think they're, and I have to double check this with them, but I think people, I think 150 people have joined the organization. Next year. And, and plus minus a couple of a couple of people, right? So folks, when I tell you that people out, the agents that want to, that want to join, they're thinking of joining other teams, other brokerages, they're doing it because they feel that lack of coaching, lack of support, a lack of knowledge. And these information products, these coaching products, they hit them right where they, they right, right in the field. It hits them right in their need right? And their desire to have more production, right? But it's not just, you can't just promise them transactions. You can't do that. People are not going to buy that. They don't, they don't think that's sincere. But if you show them that you have a proven method, a proven set of steps, a proven methodology that you want to share with them, and there's a coaching component involved in it, and you personally have closed, I don't know how many transactions with that, you following that, that way of doing things, that you're going to win with that. That's amazing. People get that. And, and there's something about productizing it, giving a really specific goal, a really specific methodology that blows people away, right? I'll well, you know, something just hit me and, and we're talking yeah. about broker recruitment. We're talking about team recruitment. We're talking about agent yeah. recruitment, all sort of the same in the same thing. Um, I've got two friends who have rolled out uh, uh, online courses, right? Wow, they should absolutely be utilizing a service and both of those are scaled. Uh nationally right so you have a national database to call through to drive people to your training program and it's funny a couple of the brokerages you you mentioned there that that are kind of calling on a national level i know it's true they've called into our market i've spoken to them and like where are you calling from everybody has everybody uh -huh. has gotten the picture of the company right yeah it's it's pretty it's pretty uh it's pretty fascinating let me let me ask some some questions or let me ask, share some concerns with you that i have yeah. and you tell me what you think and you may not have the answer for it yeah. do you ever think this space gets oversaturated um as people start to do this at some point in time if my phone's ringing 10 times a day from prospectors i'm gonna adjust to it and be like all right block 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 we're certainly not there yet do you see it going there um is that a concern for you so I, I think I, it's always a concern because as I'm, I'm a professional marketer for my company, right? I'm a business yep. owner. I, I, I live and breathe marketing. I think all of these channels get some saturation. Think about email, Jason. Email, I used to read 100% of my emails 20 years ago. 100% of every single email I received because an email was an event. Holy cow, this is amazing. Who wrote to me today, right? Yep. That's not true 20 years later. Probably wasn't true 10 years later, right? Or five years later. Um, but these channels, they get saturated. I do my recruiting for my company through Facebook ads, right? Um, that, the last six months, 
if, if anyone's noticed, the labor force has been going through a lot of changes recently. Um, that my hiring funnel broke down, right? Because the, the targets that I had set, the metrics I had set, they got upended and they got moved around, right? Uh, 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 Facebook came out with a, or Apple came out with an iOS update that really messed up Facebook conversion in the last 12 months. So the, the, I think the, the constant is all of these channels, not even saturation, all these channels are going to go through changes, all of them, cell so phone, uh, uh, email, Facebook. So I, I, I understand, I, that's always in the back of my mind, but that would never stop me from trying. Because right. Because the saturation comes when you get diminishing returns. It should never stop you from trying and experimenting with these channels, right? Yeah. If it's not going to be Facebook, it's going to be TikTok. If it's not going to be TikTok, it's going to be, you know, Weiwei, whatever the Chinese version yeah, of TikTok. Just yeah, just adapt It's always going to be the next thing. It's always the next thing. So instead of seeing this as, man, so I, I, I've, I've bummed. I'm a, I'm a phone call company. I always get bummed when our connection rates go down. Connection rates are going down, and they've been going down for the last five, six years, right? So it just make it, it's for us. It's made us into a better company, right? Because now we don't. We used to do ninety percent prospecting from the phone book uh, six years ago. Now that's not a viable business model. We still do cold calling, but it has to be with more targeted lists, like age of recruitment, like investors verified double check list. That we have to level up that business for it to be even uh, profitable. Now that's the approach I take. It will have to level up, no matter sure. what the changes are. Because as an agent, how many calls do you get a day trying to sell you anything? We're going recruiting you, trying to sell you things or send things to you. Uh, yes, there's, Where there's, do you there's, want to start? there's yeah. currently that level of saturation. How many emails do you get a day trying to sell you things? Those cold email messages you get. Um, you know, there's always going to be the noise there. The challenge for us, I, you know, it's like, you know, don't, 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 hate the, don't hate the player, hate the game. How can I do a better game? Right? How can I up my game to get your attention, Jason? Because I know you got 10 calls. My intro to that script might be, Jason, I know I'm like the 15 calls trying to get your attention today, but, but I promise you none of them are going to say this and then go into your pitch, like right yep. there. I got just that, that humorous start. I'm going to stop you from kidding, you know, hang up, hang up on me like immediately, right? I'm going to yep. stop you. And I'm going to give you, Gus, I'm going to give you permission to get five more seconds of my time to see what this is about. Because you, know, you made me you made me chuckle this morning, right? So that I see that as a challenge. I don't see it as an insurmountable challenge at all. No way at all. Because I've been through this. I've, I've been in this business long enough, and I go, "You're always looking for the next thing. You're always looking for that next edge." And I always want to look at diminishing returns as a practitioner, not diminishing returns as a headline reader where I'm not even trying it. Uh, when someone, because you can have the same kind of concern with Facebook ads, Google ads. Google ads is making a huge comeback. Google pay per click. It's the hottest thing on lab code agents and other groups. Like, hey, they're getting amazing results. Great cost per lead. But what's old is new again. These things, Google pay per click is the first thing I've seen come back, right? Because usually these channels get saturated and they become unprofitable. Well, Google is more profitable now than it was three years ago, which I think is amazing. Um, you've got to be practicing these things. Put them into practice and see what results you can get in your market. And then decide, do I scale this up? Do I scale this down? Or do I change the channel? So long answer to your question there, Jason. Yep. But this does not deter me at all. Um, I'm always looking for the next thing. And I always want to put things into practice and then decide, is this worth my time or not? Well, this, this might help some of the conversations out there. I, I do believe it will be oversaturated. You're thinking about it. We're talking about it. It's not there yet in, in this yeah, capacity. Or at least sure. hopefully, I don't think it is. Um, I, that may be different in 36 months or 24 months. But, but by then, maybe you've built the empire you wanted to build. Um, and then so let's talk about return on investment for a little bit. Um, yeah. Let's get into the numbers. What are what some of your top clients What's the expectation for return on investment? Yeah, absolutely. That's great. So, and, and, and that's what I want to get into it. Because for me, return on investment, I turn that conversation into calling list, right? For me, that's what I look at. Because when I see what's the best ROI, it's always tied to a certain lead source for me. That's how I like to, tie, to frame that conversation. So, number one topic we talked about was an offer, right? You have to have a compelling offer. A great list. A great ISA, a great anything, great caller, and a great closer doesn't really matter if your offer is not compelling. If you're just trying to get people to come onto your brokerage because you've got really good training and you've got a great competitive split, 
Well, guess what? Everyone has a competitive weight. Everyone has compelling training, whatever that means. Um, and, and everyone wants to think they're the best things in spice bread. The offer is number one, folks. And, that, and I think that digitize your, your information product, create an information product, I think is an amazing way to up your game in that offer space, right? So that being said, okay, what's the best ROI? Okay, you have that offer. You've got an offer there. You're testing it in the marketplace. You want to get to try. What's the best ROI? So whenever we're doing recruiting campaigns, we don't go straight into calling the MLS, for example, because that is, again, that is the most scalable way to do this because there's a lot of numbers. There can be 10,000 numbers in your MLS, or you can be in California where there's 100,000 numbers in some of these MLSs, 200,000 numbers in some of these MLSs, right? So MLS is a great way to, to, to spend your time and get a return. It is probably the lowest converting one as well, right? So even though you're going to be net positive, it's going to take you a lot of calls, a lot of pages to do that, to, make, to get a result there. Um, Jason, you mentioned something when you, when you talked about the MLS. You said, hey, well, we have a filtered list, right? A filtered list. So that is, you're, you're raising the ROI right there, right? So instead of calling 100,000 real estate agents, the, the only thing you know is that they're licensed. That's all you know. Okay, I'm going to go from 100,000 to, because it's going to take you, to call 100,000 uh, real estate agents, it's going to take you about 1,000 calling days, right? Which is years of work, years of work to get through that list. Okay, so, so let's, let's make it more efficient, right? How much is that going to cost? Thousands of dollars to get through that list. Okay, let's scale it back then. What would it take for me to call? And I only want to call agents that have at least mm, five closed transactions in the last 12 months which means they're, they're probably at least part-time and they're active in the business. They're actually closing deals. Well, guess what? That 100,000 person list went from 100,000 to probably 20,000, right? Or 30,000. Not everyone's active, right? And not everyone's active at that level at least five transactions in the last year. The, the, the better you are at understanding who your avatar is, who's that target agent you want on your team, the much more efficient you're going to be at finding them. I'll give you a couple of examples. We have a, a lot of the big national brokerages, Keller Williams, VP, the larger ones, they're like, they, their specialty is bringing in brand new agents, brand new agents, right? Or, or people that are new to the business. So they don't even call the MLS a lot of times. Not, that's not a big chunk of what they do at all. They're advertising on Craigslist, Indeed, ZipRecruiter, um, Facebook Marketplace that, hey, you want to get into real estate? We're the best place to start. They understand their target market. 90% of who they get in those brokerages nowadays is brand new agents. And they do a really good job at marketing and finding them and reaching out, nurturing them and converting them. The smaller brokerages, they have a little bit of, they can have a different uh, a target. They want producing agents, but agents that aren't producing enough. And that's where a lot of these, um, some of these large EXP organizations, that's who they want to target because the only way these organizations make money is that they have producing agents. That's the kicker, right? That's the really interesting part of that model. They want to target people, let's say, with at least 10 transactions uh, in, the, in the last 12 months, right? Because their offer is, and I'm going to grab an, an example from one of these offers. This is a real offer is, hey, wherever you're at, we can double your production. That is our offer. That's it. And here's the way we do it. But if you're at 10, we can take it to 20. If you're at 100, we can take it to 200 because we have people in our organization that do 200 transactions a year, right? And you can get access to that. So what that, that, that is a really specific kind of person. At least 10 transactions and hungry for more. At least 10 transactions and hungry for more, right? That is a really great avatar, target market, persona. Um, and the greater clarity you have on that, you go from 100,000 random numbers to 3,000 highly targeted numbers. Your offer is really going to resonate with that. If you tell someone that's closed one transaction in the last two years, you're going to double their income. Like, click, I still can't live off you doubling my income. If you tell someone making six figures, you can help them double their income. They are going to want to hear the rest of that page. Okay, tell me more, right? So that is, so we're talking about ROI. For me, ROI is how do you make that process more efficient? Because out of 100,000 numbers you're calling, Jason, you might get one appointment the whole week. One person willing to talk to you the whole week. You have a targeted list of 3,000 people that you have that the offer is catered to. That's where you can get the example I mentioned, three, four, five, six appointments in a single day. 
from calling agents, right? So it, it really is about that. It really is about that. I can throw out all the numbers that you want. I'm yep. going down to like, this is how you get the number. It is the offer combined with the right targeting for that audience, right? You yep. get the right audience dialed in, you're going to get appointments left and right. If you're just calling the whole MLS, you're going to get, and I've seen this happen, one appointment per week. And that's just not going to be a sustainable campaign. It's not going to be successful. So uh, I hope that's a really kind of high arch overarching answer to your question there, Jason. Um, but I see that as how can you target that audience at every one of those steps is the highest ROI. What is the top of that pyramid? What is the very pinnacle of this recruiting uh, process? I'm oh, sorry, recruiting target, recruiting audience. I'll tell you what I've seen to be the number one converting source for teams, for brokerages, for EXP organizations, and this is not close when this comes to it. It is agents that actually know who you are. That is bar none, the top of the top, the highest converting source, the, you know, the promised land, it's the great. If you make 10 calls to cooperating agents, friends of yours from that last brokerage, people you know from the realtor board, people that know you from the MLS you know, committee, whatever it is, whoever that happens to be, but they know who Jason Martin is. If Jason Martin calls them, they're going to go, hey, Jason, that is always going to be your highest converting pool of agents. What is the challenge? Well, so for some agents, that's 10 people that they know who they are. And for other agents, it's a thousand people that know who they are, right? This example that I gave of the 3,000 people that went to that coaching uh, consulting program and 150 actually joined the team is from an agent that, surprise, surprise, has a sphere of about 10,000 agents. Know who this agent is. And this is the guys in Canada, mega producer of Calgary. All of Canada know who this guy is, right? So obviously that helps, right? People, for some people that's 10,000 people, for some people that's 10 people. I'm just here to tell you that's always gonna be your highest converting group. Uh, if, you, if there's 100 people that know who Jason is, Jason, you're gonna have an easier time recruiting. And you might not even need so to outsource those calls because those are always going to be better than you make them, right? The people that know, like, and trust you. That's the best. It's like real estate, folks. Is it easy to make to call your database and ask for business or to call the phone book and ask for business? It's always, the answer is always going to be your database. Agents that know, like, and trust you is the, is the equivalent of calling your database. Is it worth it for you to call your database? I would tell people, when I would call my database, that was a $10,000 an hour activity for me, calling my database as an agent, right? Because I knew that if I put the hours in, I would make 30, 40 grand from calling my database. That was, so for me, I looked how many hours, it didn't take me too many hours, I didn't have that many people. So that was a $10,000 an hour activity for me. So uh, that is, talking about ROI, the highest ROI is whenever you're hiring for your team or your brokerage, Make sure every agent in your sphere knows that. Oh, so that, Jason, call me again. I agree with you. I, 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 I get down with that. The conversion rate is, is much higher. Um, I, don't, I don't actually want to deter people that don't already have that baked in because I think they're still going to get results even if they yeah. don't know who you are. And yeah, worst absolutely. case scenario, worst case scenario, you, you, you have a follow-up call after the initial appointment set or it's an in-person meeting, then you're adding them to the database, just like normal guys. And, and when you add them to the database and you market to the database and you just stay with it for years and years and years, it, it, it builds up and continues to expand. So, so I want to throw something out there to you guys. If you have questions, throw them in the chat, please. I'm, I'm taking a look at the chat as we go here, but I just want to recap to make sure that if, if you joined a little bit late, there's, there's three things that I've taken away already that is, is really interesting. And I'm gonna uh, utilize these three things right away. Creativity with the offers, um, not your standard, hey, do you know so-and-so? They run a real estate team or are you familiar with this brokerage? Not that at all. So I'm gonna go away from that, by the way. That's generally been mine. I'll, I will admit that to you. Um, who is your target? I love that. I, I absolutely can confirm that. Go right at your target audience know who they are from the jump. Um, I'm very clear on, what, on, on who my target audience is. And mainly it comes from a spot of who I actually believe that I can actually help, right? I don't that, that is it. So, so, oh, Jason, so thank you yep. so much so for saying that. 
if you don't know who your target audience is, that's the question you should ask. If I, yep. if, and, and, and base it on a really simple uh, uh, dilemma. Should I help a brand new person coming into real estate or a producing agent that I can double their income? Which one of those two have you actually done before, right? Ask yourself yep. that question. The answer to that question is going to lead you to your target audience. I think. And you, you might do both, right? I don't do both. And, and this is just, I'll share my failures with you guys and, and, and go from there. I, I'm not good with brand new agents, right? The time they take to train up on contracts, the, the time and the questions and the calls that come in, the liability that comes in with brand new agents. My organization isn't built for new agents. Um, I love the agents that, that are really looking to grow. And, and people are going to say that that's everybody. Nah, sort of. We actually, when we get them to the second round after the, the initial appointment is set by the, on the prospecting end, when we get them to the second round, we believe that we have something for them that we know they can have. We don't believe it. We yeah. know it. And then, then yeah. we're just trying to figure out if it's a match. That's also one of my, my favorite things about this is I might be on four uh, calls a day, right? And all four are 15 minute calls that have already been set up for me by, by the ISAs. Awesome. Wow. So they set them up. We're lining up a 15 minute call on the back end. And within three to five minutes, I know on that call, think about the time I'm saving here, three to five oh, minutes yeah. on that call. I know if that person is likely a fit for the organization, actually, if we can help them. I, I don't want to do it if I don't believe I can't help them. So many times I'll be off that call in 180 seconds and on to go. the next one. And so, man, it's awesome. And the good news is um, when we set the secondary appointment for the 15 minute you know, exploratory call or whatever, they already know it's me. They've already researched who we are. We already have a presence. They already know us. Even if they did it before that initial appointment was set, they now do. Um, and, and it's a really a much faster conversation. And then it comes into, I look at it in a, as a three phase process. The initial appointment set, there's a follow up 15 minute call with Jason and there's a face to face meeting if I think it's the right fit. So in gotcha. one hour, one hour total of my time for an individual, we may be bringing agents on. It takes one hour. I think of it in one gotcha. hour blocks. And that's only if we're interested in bringing them in for an interview. And so if we, we talked about the return on investment, return on time, return on investment. I love it. I mentioned that uh, uh, the saturation part because I got my fingers crossed and it doesn't get oversaturated. <laughs> this is the rhythm I want to stay in. I wish it didn't take me so long to, to get here, but I will tell everybody listening, the reason it took me so long is because of my own limiting beliefs. And, and that know. was that, that they're, they're going to want to talk to me right from the jump. Well, I got to spend three hours doing that, or could I spend three hours in one-on-one -on -one meetings? You guys tell me. Uh, I, don't, I don't know the answer what the conversion rate is. And let's be honest, if I'm spending three hours cold calling for myself on behalf of myself, which I've done plenty of times, and if we got to do it again, we'll do it again. Um, but you do that, and then you're going to go into three hours worth of one-on-one -on -one meetings, your energy level somewhere is going to, I don't have a 24-hour candle and burn. So I'm not even giving my best energy to these folks when I'm in the one-on-one -on -one meetings where I spent three hours on the front end prospecting and then three hours in meetings. I'm awesome where I'm just in the meetings. I can be fully present and I can explain our value proposition at a very, very high level. What, what am I missing? You and I could talk about this for two more hours. There, there, there's way, one I more. Do not work. I do not work for Power ISA. I am not employed <laughs> by Power ISA. <laughs> Uh, maybe Love I it. should be after this one. Yeah, but, uh, exactly. Let, like let, I said, check, check in the mail, right? No, but there's yeah. one more thing. Is it, I want to get it out there because the, the, it's not magical where, hey, you've got an offer, you've got an audience, and you're done. Actually, that's not the way it works, though. It's not the right. way it works. So you're going to get some home runs from that. You're going to get some immediate matches and good conversations. The ISAs, as they call through either the MLS or whatever list they have, they're, they're, that's a finite list. Right? It's rarely that we have projects where we call the entire MLS. It's not really the, the, that's typically not what we do. We have a, a smaller list that we're going to cycle through throughout the year. You're not going to stop, you know, calling it. You're never really done with the recruiting or delivering the pitch. There is a nurturing and follow up process, the same way there is for any other lead. They're the same, it's the same principle that they might not be a fit at that moment, 
they may not be open to talking to you just yet, but you, they've given you permission to follow up with them in the future, right? So even, so let's say, you know, through Jason, that's a great example, Jason. He's got a three-step process. If they fall out of each one of those steps, but there's still potential there, they're going to go into your nurturing list. If you're, before they go to Jason, if there's calling, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. I'm really interested, but you know what, you never know. Call me back later. If they're, if they're receptive to that call, and they're not like cussing you out and hanging up on you, that person should go on your follow-up list because you're going to call them again in three months, in six months. I cannot, uh, this, is, this sounds like it's fake, but it's not fake because sometimes you call people at the right time. They're not ready. They're not ready right then and there. They're not ready right then and there. Wait until they have that tough conversation with their broker and they're thinking, man, what am I doing here? That's when you want to call them, right? That within, within a week or two of that moment, and you're going to, and you've, and you've done this long enough, you're, not, you're going to realize that's a real thing. You call them right in, the, and I've heard people call this the law of attraction. The universe is conspiring for you to call me at that moment. Well, they didn't even remember we called them six months ago. And they, well, the universe didn't conspire then, uh, but they conspired now. People do not expect you to follow up with them, especially agents. They do not, they do not expect you to follow up with them. Six months from now, they're not going to remember you called them, Jake. They're not even going to go, well, wait, what? And, right. and you might get them at the right time. One of the, probably one of the more successful campaigns we've run had a follow-up list, not a massive follow-up list, maybe a couple hundred people on that list. They were on their watch list. They wanted to keep in touch with them. But they really wanted these 200 people to eventually join their brokerage. Every single month, this might be a little aggressive for some folks, but every single month, they would get a call, an email, and text message inviting them to whatever event the brokers was doing that month for the tree. Wine and cheese night, a, a webinar during, during COVID. It was like a webinar with this amazing speaker that they, were, they had gotten for their company, but they would always invite their potential recruit. They were always on the invite list. Call, not just invite them. Not just an email, not just an email, guys. Do not cop out. You have to give the, make the call. Make the call because even if they don't go to the event, you're keeping in touch with them and you're, and you're giving them the breadcrumb of the value of joining your team, of joining your brokerage. Hey, we've got a, one of them, like a financial planner talking to the members of the team, someone like on an insurance. That's always a question agents have about health insurance. And what, what can I do? What does it cost? There's all, the, think, of, think like an agent. Well, how can you add a tremendous amount of value? And obviously talks about lead generation, lead conversion, and growing your business. I mean, all of these things that you, you want to have an event like those. My recommendation, a month, once a month is more than enough. But most people, if you did one every two months, it'd be amazing. If you did one every three months, it'd be amazing. And invite those potential recruits. Not the whole MLS. There's no point in doing that. The people you've had conversations with, they didn't become a hire, but there's something there. And that list starts at zero, and it grows every single day. It should be growing every single day of potential hires. And deliver that follow-up with them and deliver those little morsels, those little bite-sized chunks of value that might be really, really useful for them. And they're going to remember that. Don't you ever wonder, and, and we got to wrap this up here in a minute or two to, to respect everybody's time, Gus, but don't you guys wonder sometimes if there's some brokers that are, that are listening and watching right now, but I often wonder, like, how did that brokerage get to four or five or 600 agents in my area? Now, let's be honest. Do you think the broker is recruiting for six hours a day on the phone? Probably not. Somebody's doing it on their behalf. Do you think they are good at follow-up? Probably. Do you think they're good at in-person meetings? Probably. Do you think they have a marketing campaign and a database base built up? Probably, probably, probably. So, so I appreciate what you're saying, Gus, because I don't, I don't want people to think, okay, cool, you guys are going to set it. Although I'll tell you, I think you can get immediate results. I really do. I think you get results in 30, 60, 90 days. But if you want um, to double, or triple, and quadruple those results, make it a long-term game and, and make yeah. sure you have your marketing campaign lined up a month, a quarter, um, to your point, in advance, and just keep that drip going. 
it's nothing, nothing's brand new here. So uh, nothing's brand Absolutely. new. It's a numbers game. Gus, man, every time I talk to you, you, you inspire me. I take some, some tips away and uh, awesome. I really appreciate, I really appreciate the, uh, the conversation today. Gustavo Munoz Castro, CEO of Power ISA. If anybody wants to get in touch with you, they want to connect with you. They want to talk about utilizing you for their services. What do we do? Uh, you can reach out, powerisa.com slash LCA. It's really important because we love knowing where you guys came from. And if you come through some other way on our website, or just let us know you're coming from LCA. Why? Because we have a special offer that we only give to LCA members. So definitely let us know. We love hearing from folks at Lab Code Agents. This is a great process of recruiting. I've given you some amazing tips you can go out and implement on your own. If you're at the level, like Jason, we need some help and your time is better served by having leverage, then I'd love to have a conversation with you. Oh man, Gustavo, always a pleasure, my friend. And we put it in the chat there for you. There's the link if you want to connect. Guys, enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, hey, next week's Thanksgiving. Enjoy that too. Spend some time thinking about this. I think you'll uh, like the results if you give it a shot. So long, everyone. Great. Thanks for being a part. Gus, I'll be in touch, my friend. All right, thanks. See you. Thank you.